It's time that I tell you the truth about YouTube. YouTube can be exciting. YouTube is the idea that you plant in your head that you can't wait to start. And sometimes you may be a bit hesitant and you wanna write down the ideas, but when you first start, it's brilliant, it's entertaining, it's funny, it's all you can think about, it's all you can record, it's all that you upload. The excitement swells over you and for two, three months it could drive you directly. If anything, it could be a little bit too stimulating and you might get a bit too excited and put too much content out there that you could have drip fed. Or you put too much work out there that, that you've kind of stumbled across your own feet. Excitement's great for ideas. Excitement's great for getting you off that launch pad. You're all amped up, you're waiting for those first few views, those first few subscribers, and then three, four months in, you realize that you've done 30, 40 videos and you're like, hang on, where are they? Where are these people? And that's when you hit your first soul-crushing wall. YouTube is such a roller coaster that the excitement and the exhilaration of the winds are matched equally by the crushing monotony and the pain of hitting the bottom of your excitement. It can be soul-destroying and crushing. You'll make a video, you'll put hours into it, and you think, oh, that's fantastic, it's a great idea, I recorded it properly, I uploaded it at the right time, my last video did really well, this should absolutely kill it, and then it does nothing. The ups and downs based on the time of year. When the kids are at school, your videos do well. When the kids are at home, nobody cares about you. Maybe one of your videos hooked on a suggestion of some other big boy and it looks really really well <sighs> and then it crashes and your channel slowly shrinks or just seems to be sat there like you were growing at 20 30 50 subscribers a week and now now it's doing nothing you hold the knowledge safe in your heart that don't worry if I just keep going and keep plodding I'll keep growing and then you look at someone that started last week or two three weeks before you and oh bang they've exploded they've jumped over you that's not fair I picked my number I'm number 26 how comes you beat me to the viral line before anybody else one of the saddest things for me is that you will see people give up when I first started YouTube I was surrounded by a large group of very talented individuals. They were fantastic. We'd meet every Saturday online, we'd have kind of like a, a chat party and we'd be on Google Hangouts and we'd review films and we'd hang around and be silly. Over time, that little group of people disappeared. Life got in the way. Some stopped recording, some had kids, some moved away, some got bored. And at that time, there was about 10, 15 of us. And I think in all honesty, there's about three of us left that are active and I'm the most stubborn. I've done this adventure twice and I've drilled it. I've absolutely stubbornly stuck to it. And maybe that's me. That's just my mindset. So you will lose people. People will float away. Your first 100 videos will educate you on how to set up a camera, how you look, do you talk too fast? Do you talk too slow? Is the lighting a bit weird? Is the sound a bit wonky? Is the camera a bit shaky? The first 100 videos teaches you all of these important things. The basics, how to upload, how to interact, where to share. The next 200, you kind of have your foundation now. These are the ones that mold you. These are the ones that have a look at your video and you tweak this bit and you ers and ums are removed and you craft the videos to a point where you know what you're doing. In my case, I remove intros or I add intros, I add end cards, I point in certain locations, I remove certain sayings or I throw in little tidbits for the people that have been watching forever and a day like me rubbing my man nipples. These 200 builds your personality in something unique because the first 100 you're probably thinking I want to be the British version of that person, I want to be the new version of this one. I want to do what Smosh is doing. I want to do what Philip DeFranco is doing, but with a twist. Your 200 videos is how you finesse that and you slowly become you and people come for you. The first 500 videos will be a test. It's whether you keep going, whether you've seen the analytics, whether you're willing to grind, whether you are willing to tweak and change and keep going stubbornly. I won nearly 500 videos on this channel. That's 11,000, nearly 12,000 subscribers and 1.4, 1.5 million views. Your first few hundred videos, no one's really gonna watch, but that's to your benefit because you can learn. You can suck and not have so many eyes on you pointing and judging. It will be testing your first 500 videos because you have to go through the mental barrier of, well, I've done 500 videos, why aren't I PewDiePie? I've done 500 videos, why can't this be full time yet? Your first 500 videos is truly your test of fortitude and 
your test of your brain, because those are 500 videos that could be also 500 blogs and 500 podcasts and thousands of thousands of posts on social media. And if you do that, that can grow your web to pull more people in. Your first 1,000 videos could truly make you. If you're 1,000 videos in and you're doing three, four, five videos a week, or you've been doing one to two videos a week for nearly 10 years, this is you learning. This is you, you've already dedicate your idea to the idea that you're doing this. You're already stubborn. You already know what could pull people in. You already know what your style is. You already know your branding. You already know your audience. Your first 1,000 builds that audience, builds the people that continue to come back to you, builds that, in my case, referral base, because hopefully there's, as I said, about 12,000 people watching this, or at least the access to, as in my subscribers, and a percentage of those might come to me for channel reviews, or might come to me for a digital product, or might click on my affiliate links that earn me money, that means that I can pay my bills, that means I can focus on this more, make more videos rather than I don't know, stocking shelves. For years, I was a security guard, watching people, making sure they weren't stealing shit. For years, I also worked in a bank, you know? Hello, how can I help you? Yeah, your balance is. Your first 1,000 videos, if crafted properly, if interlinked with the right referral links, if have the right business connections, if you have the right network behind, if you've built something into it, then it can push you forward. Me? Around about 300 videos in, around about 3,000 subscribers, I was full time with money outside of YouTube enough to make this my main concern. Because YouTube is truly that marathon. A thousand videos in, two, three years in, you've got to understand that you can't do it. Not everyone's going to be Janelle Eliana. Not everyone's going to put up their first video, get millions of views, millions of subscribers, and instantly become financially independent based on the adverts. Those adverts may not even favor you. Maybe you're creating entertainment content. Maybe you're doing new stuff. Philip DeFranco, for example, one of the biggest YouTubers on this platform, well known, has issues with demonetization. And all he does is talk about the actual news. He's not out there to inflame people. All he's doing is talking about day-to-day -day events. And that causes him problems. And it causes him cash flow issues. So we had to build a business around it. The advertising, the sponsorship, the website, that kind of thing. YouTube is a marathon and you need to understand every step of that race. Not the first 100 meters, not the last 200 meters to the finishing line, every 26 odd miles in between. YouTube can and will change. Over the last five, six years, I've seen constant changing, whether it's been monetization, demonetization, dodgy looking kid content, the kid friendly movement, and now we're swaying into 2020 and they seem to be suggesting that the kids content might die along with the animation, but we'll start allowing more edgy content back on it. We'll put edgy adverts against your stuff. We'll put beer against your videos rather than, you know, toys and Mattel and stuff like that. Every year there's a new algorithm. Every year there's a new rule. Do you remember when it used to just be views to get you promoted so people would buy views and they'd bot their way to the top and they'd grow and then YouTube realized that views isn't a good way to do it so why don't we do view time and then YouTube realized that views isn't the best way to do it so why don't we do watch time so people started creating 10 20 minute long videos and then that popped and then there's like Ah, okay, we need to tweak that. And then everyone realized that drama caused the thing, so they did pranks, and they did abuse, and they did bullying, like Leafy is here. They will change the rules with copper. They will change the rules with terms of conditions. They will change features and functionality. They'll add trending tabs. They'll remove creator of the year or creator of the month. They'll rebuild the homepage so there's no longer a featured person like they used to be on playlists. Everything has changed on this site over the last eight, 10 years, and you, need to be aware that that will happen. So you need to be flexible enough to change when YouTube changes. Or build a network outside of YouTube that YouTube is pure and simply a lead source and the business runs without it. This will just help you generate a face, a brand. Look at Gary V. He's got a huge business. He doesn't need to put videos on YouTube, but he does so people knows who he is. He speaks the truth. It's a media outlet and everybody knows who he is. And this could be your media outlet to support the business that you build around it. Dedication and long-term planning is truly what you need to do on YouTube. Think of the big picture because the truth about YouTube is it's much harder than you may have initially thought. The truth about YouTube is it's a whole giant Jenga tower that you need to build around it, and it can be fragile. All you need to do is make sure that you're building the support networks around it so that if anyone removes any piece, 
the tower doesn't fall over. It will take a while. He may even fail enough that the tower falls over, but don't give up, keep building. But if you need guidance on how to do that, watch this playlist, it will truly inspire you. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon and I'll see you soon.